Well, good morning and welcome to the world of frequency um, graphs. We talked about them in class a little bit. We created frequency distributions and cumulative frequency distributions. And then this is what happens or what you get when you actually graph one. So that's all great and lovely. But um, the question is now, how the heck do I read this? I'm going to go through a couple of scenarios, hopefully make, make these graphs make a little bit more sense to you. What I've got plotted is I have plotted down here the dollar tra transactions in dollar values um, which range from zero dollars, uh, people who just came in, walked around, left the store, bought nothing, to people who were the big spenders who spent up to two hundred dollars. What these numbers down here represent, remember this is the lower class limit of your first class. Remember when I told you in class that you always put that zero in your cumulative frequency distribution? Well, there's the reason. Because the first class really represents anybody who spent less than $25. So that class is from zero up to, but not including 25. This next class is 25 up to, but not including 50. 50 up to, but not including 75, 75 up to, but not including 100. So you kind of get the idea. All right, that's great. So now what do I have on the other axis? Well, on this axis, what I have is I have the number that appeared in each class. So that's 100 transactions. 200 transactions. Remember, this is cumulative. Remember, we kept kept rolling down, and we kept adding them up until, remember, I told you that you could always know that you were correct because you had the total number of observations. So if I wanted you to be able to tell me how many total transactions we had, well, we had a total we had a total of 500 transactions right? and the largest dollar transaction was $200. And all of that just simply came from the all of that simply came from our frequency distribution. Alright, so how do I actually read this thing? What if I wanted to know and asked you how many people spent less than a hundred dollars? Well, I've already told you that this class represents zero up to 25, 25 up to 50, 50 up to 75, 75 up to, but not including a hundred dollars. That's this plot right here, isn't it? So, because it's a cumulative graph, all I need to do is go back and find out where my vertical or y-axis intersects my point and then come over here because this is nothing more than cumulative frequency and I automatically know that a hundred people spent less than a hundred dollars. All right, so hopefully that's going to make it make a little bit more sense on this one. Let's see what else we can do with these. All right, so last time we looked at how many people spent less than $100. Let's find out how many people were a little bit more generous and dug into their wallets. What if I asked you to find me how many people spent more than 150 Remember down here, zero up to... 25, 25 up to 50, 50 up to 75, 75 up to 100, 100 up to 25, 25 up to but not including 150. That means that this class was 150 up to 175, right? And this one was 175 up to 200 which means that this class right here includes everybody who spent 150 or more 
This is everybody who spent 175 or more, and then totally 100% of what we have. So if I want to know how many people spent 150 or more, now I'm going to look at the right side. I'm going to look to the right, and I'm going to say, well, it was all of these people. The way that this graph works is because I'm cumulative over here on my x axis, y axis to the left, I want to find out how much space or what quantity of data falls in that area of the plot. Well, I went from 400 to 500, which is going to mean that 100, right, because there's 100 between 400 and 500 that 100 people spent more than $150. Because when I'm looking for more, I'm always going to read the line to the right. Remember last time we looked at how many spent less than 100, and we read the line to the left. So now we've looked at how to identify how many people fell into below a class limit, how many people fell above a class limit, now let's take a look and see how do we determine how many people fell between two limits. Okay, so we've done how much is below, how much is above. Let's find out how much is between. What if I wanted to find out everybody who spent between $100 and $150? The way those classes work is this plot right here represents everybody who spent a hundred or between a hundred and a hundred up to but not including 125 these people spent between 125 up to 150 so I come up here and I find my plot equal to 150 and now before where I read the line to the right and to the left now I want to read the graph in between so now all I need to do is go back over here to my y-axis and say, all right, that's 400. And way down here is 100. So how many of my data observations or my um, transactions fell between $100, which is, remember this one right here, and 150, this one right here. Well, it's the frequency rose from 100 to 400 dollars. Last time I did my math, that would give me 300. So I know that 300 people spent between 100 and 150 dollars. I hope this makes it make a little bit more sense. If you have any more questions, just let me know, and have a great day.